Hello, welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Today I wanted to do a little video about uh, copper plating 3D prints. Now there's loads of videos on the internet about copper plating and there's a few around copper plating plastic or copper plating 3D prints but to me they all seem to be missing an element here or there. So I wanted to put together a video to make sure I capture all the elements and give you a chance if you're doing it at home of getting the process pretty much right first time from beginning to end. I'm going to talk in two parts. The first part about uh, making our 3D print conductive so we can electroplate it and the second part about actually making up the bath, putting it in and getting a, a finish off our copper plating. So um, what can we expect? Well I did this uh, copper plating about a week or so ago and uh, it's just a 3D print from uh, an object on Thingiverse. So, this is it. So um, as you can see, it's got a nice copper plate on. It's pretty complete copper plate, goes all the way around the object, into the eye sockets and everything. Um, this was done about a week ago and it's got a bit of a tarnish on it now. So it's darkened in color. When it first was done, it was quite bright and I could have sort of uh, give it a clear coat lacquer and kept it like that, but I quite like the dark color. So I left it to go a bit darker. So, um, as I said, the first stage will be creating a conductive layer for that. Now I'm going to be using graphite with a binder and the binder I've chosen is a polyurethane. So from polyurethane varnish, I'm going to mix in some graphite and create the layer. So we then paint our object with that and we can give it a buff after that, which makes quite a shiny object. And I quite like the finish on that, to be honest with you. I'm quite happy with the finish on that and I might use that on some old prints and not actually copper plate them at all. So this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's like a black metal type look to it. It doesn't come off on your fingers. It's quite sealed. It's a, a nice finish. I do actually like that. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna be using that as well. So enough of waffle. Um, let's get on with it. What do we need to actually buy and how do we actually mix it all up? So uh, first of all, let's do the shopping list. Okay. So here is our shopping list. As you can see, there's quite a few items here, but don't worry about that. A lot of them are showing alternatives and different things that you can use to get yourself started without spending too much money. So the first thing is on the left is the components made for, for making up our polyurethane graphite conductive layer that we need to uh, electroplate with. Um, I'm using a polyurethane varnish, as I mentioned. Um, you can use anything really, but the newer versions of polyurethane tend to be water-based, so be aware of that. This is a VOC one, uh, which means it's solvent-based, which is, I think, much better. Uh, you've got much more chance of that surviving in our solution than the water-based one, which may bubble up and do some weird stuff. I haven't done much test, or I haven't done any testing with a water-based one. Um, maybe that'll be a follow-up video, I don't know. So that's the varnish which provides the actual binder. Then the actual graphite, you've got a couple of options. You can either go for a bulk buy one. So this one was um, 500 grams, half a kilogram, and it cost me £10.70 uh, from eBay. Arrived in a few days, so delivered from the UK. Um, so that's a good option. If you don't want to spend that much money and you just want to give this thing a go, you could probably go for something like this. Uh, this is from China. Uh, sold as a locksmith's graphite um, again about 60 grams in here so and that was only like one pound and seven pence or something like that so if you shop around on eBay you can get some good bargains obviously you have to wait a little bit longer to actually get the stuff and use it so we mix those two together um, roughly 50 50 percent by volume I'll show you that in a little bit because I then tend to add a bit more graphite and then use a solvent to thin it off again. Um, you'll need a jar or somewhere to store it once you've actually mixed it. So this is a little sealable jar that I found. Uh, I think this was a pound and I've got a marble in there. Uh, the graphite needs mixing so you can't hear the marble banging around but it is in there. Uh, so that's our first step one covered basically. Two components, graphite and a polyurethane mixed together. A lot of Electroplating solutions, um, particularly the professional ones and that, all, always use um, sulfuric acid as a base. Uh, last couple of years it's been illegal to buy sulfuric acid in the UK, so um, I'm going to be using malt vinegar instead, a lot easier to get hold of. 
and just any white vinegar will do either the distilled malt one or the just the non-distilled one the non-brewed one which is just acetic acid which is what the distilled vinegar turns into anyway so you can use that as a base um, for mixing your copper sulfate into you need some sort of a jar this one was from a, a well-known swedish uh, department store very cheap and good because it's got a nice sealable lid you can label that up and put it on a shelf away from any kids around you need a source of copper um, so pieces of copper pipe, uh, good choices. Also, electrical cable in the UK, over 99% pure copper. Uh, can strip the insulation from that and use that as well. Uh, the important one is the copper sulfate. This is a uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate. Uh, again, readily available, got that one off eBay. 500 grams was £4.50, I think. Um, so cheap, reasonable, easy to use. 500 grams will be enough to make about three liters of solution. So that would be plenty in there. Now, <clears throat> what many might call a secret ingredient, um, which is basically a gleaming agent. Now you can buy these gleaming agents and they're quite expensive, mainly because they're quite difficult to get a hold of in the UK. So you have to send, they have to come from abroad and postage and that just makes them very expensive. Bit of research turns out that um, you can use polyethylene glycol. Um, as the label says there, which is here, polyethylene glycol 6,000. This was 100 grams of that, and that cost me £6.50 from a chemical supply store that I found again on eBay. Um, so you mix that two parts uh, deionized water to one part this by volume, and then just mix them together, and then you need a suitable container for that. So I used, a, again off eBay, a little dropper bottle that I bought from there. You only need about five millilitres for every um, half a litre of solution or 10 millilitres per litre basically if you think of it like that um, and that slows down the copper plating and makes it a much brighter appearance on finish so it's pretty vital to use uh, and that's it as far as our shopping list goes so let's move on to mixing up the polyurethane and uh, graphite varnish bit of varnish into there a bit more than I expected never mind I'll do and drop the lid back onto that and then we take some graphite powder and we just drop about an equal amount by volume of graphite powder into there. Now it goes in quite bulky so just mix that together. See that there? Just let me mix that in. Trying not to stick graphite powder absolutely everywhere. It's very fine. And then we mix a, a larger quantity than this. And there we go. So we end up with like a thick sort of paste. Give it a good mix, try and break up all those big pieces of graphite. Now we want to thin it down a bit. If we started to brush this on it, go on so thick, it would give us a poor finish. So just uh, very carefully trying to add a few drops of this white spirit. Best to not do this on the, uh, on the best tablecloth. So we have a nice sort of runny mixture now which we can paint onto our object with. And just move those aside. So here's our test object. As you can see, it's the skull object I showed earlier. Um, I'm not going to show you how to paint things or anything like that. It's just to demonstrate how this stuff goes on. Um, I'll leave you to experiment with that uh, feel free to change the mixture as well it's not a precise art but basically it covers really well uh, the other thing worth mentioning is this is an unfinished 3d print normally i would finish that off smooth it off so you don't get the ringlets etc uh, but for demonstration purposes i thought i'd just paint it on and have it as an unfinished object so you can compare um, so you want to get into all the little spaces and things around there. I'm not going to paint this completely. 
at this stage, I can do that off camera. And there we go. So you just want to smooth out your brush marks. There you go. And put that to one side to dry. Um, depending on the type of varnish you use, depending on the instructions of the varnish, this particular one says allow four hours for drying. Um, I would recommend leaving it so it's properly dry. Right, so I've got that on the 20 kilo ohm scale and the width of two fingers, approximately an inch, what you're looking for is something less than 20 kilo ohms. So you can see here I've got about 1.2 kilo ohms, which is really good actually. So 1.2, that's probably about four kilo ohms across there. Um, so just checking a couple of different places. If you're getting above 10 kilo ohms, it's definitely worth doing another coat, potentially with some more graphite in the mixture. Um, you want it less than 10 kilo ohms to get a good plate on it. So now we have this uh, base all ready to go, nice and conductive. Um, the next stage is copper plating, so off to our bath. Here we have our heated white vinegar. Uh, I've just heated that in the microwave to about 50 or 60 degrees centigrade, and that's just to aid the uh, dissolving of the copper sulfate in it. Copper sulfate we're adding at uh, a ratio of 75 grams per litre. Uh, in my case I've got half a litre here so it's 37.5 grams. So now I'm going to add in the copper sulphate uh, without spilling it everywhere. So we add it in and then just using a, this is just a bamboo skewer, I'm just going to sit and stir this until it dissolves into the solution. As you can see the solution is now cleared, it's given us a nice lovely blue colour and it's nice clear at the top. There is a little bit of excess copper sulphate which has dropped to the bottom, um, it's too much for it to hold in solution, uh, but that's absolutely fine. As you can see we've got our um, jar here set up with our solution in, we mixed up. We have two pieces of copper piping, I've just used old pieces of copper wiring to, to make some clips to hold it to the side. We have our positive uh, connected to both of these and then this is our negative. Here is a part waiting to be plated. Now basically because this is a pocket of air encased in plastic it's going to want to float. It's got a good amount of buoyancy on it so we can do a couple of things, one of a couple of things here. We can either use a piece of copper wire and this one I've shaped to make a clip so we could hold it in the clip like that and that push it and keep it under the solution while it's plating um, and this is something else I've used in the past which is just an old piece of scrap wood um, with some wire and shaped to, to hold the piece under the solution while it plates in any angle. Um, if we just kept the clip on there for the whole plating process it would fuse to the copper that's on there so we have to keep moving it probably once every half an hour or so. Um, my power supply which I'm using for doing the plating you could use a battery but I'm not going to cover that here. I've set it to a maximum one volt and 100 milliamps just below to start with that's until we get a complete plate. The amount of plating, a good guide for the amount of current that you want depends on the surface area. So per square inch you want about 100 milliamps per square inch, there's probably three or even possibly four square inches of surface area there, it, it, it adds up with all these little details and things. Uh, we're going to start off much lower, so I'm going to start it at 100 as I mentioned. Right. Now when we're under the solution we've got to make sure because the amount of space in here is pretty tight, we haven't got much room, uh, we could have do, done with using a bigger vessel, we don't want to create a short circuit so we need a gap between our electrodes and the things that we're using to plate. So connect the anode up, thus double check again visually, just giving it a look round. And then we can turn it on. Now, what we've got is, you can see that it's sucking half a volt and drawing the 100 milliamps and it's limited by the amperage. That's because the copper wire that's basically going in there is taking all of the, 
uh, doing all the plating at the moment everything's going to pretty much to the copper wire and we'll do until we can build up a bit of copper around our object the point of this phase of the plating is just to get a very thin coat around our object so we'll leave that for approximately half an hour and then we'll come back and check and see what progress is we'll move the object around a little bit put it back in and continue now because we're using acetic acid or vinegar instead of something stronger like sulfuric acid um, it will probably take a lot longer to put our first coating on now i haven't done any trials against the two and i might do a future video comparing using sulfuric acid instead if you start to see bubbles or anything like that occurring you've got the current too high you shouldn't really see anything at this stage it should just be sitting there looking very inert but as long as you've got readings on your power supply and you're not shorting out you should be good to go so let's leave that okay so it's been half an hour now let's uh, take a look and see how we're uh, getting on so you can see I'm just playing this off a bit so there we go so you can see that it started to plate there and a little bit at the back there and a little bit along that wire there so we just move it around a bit move it on to our next position as it were tighten up the clamps if we need to just get it to hold and back in it goes like I said this will take quite a while to achieve a, a good coat uh, across the object but uh, it's the best way of doing it now I can see by the readings that we've dropped to 0 0.04 volts which probably means we're shorting yeah, we are just make sure we're not actually touching so here we are another approximately half hour later um, we're pulling the full 0.2 amps and we've now reached 0.6 volts but what's really important is how well the plating is spreading across the object so as we can see here we're doing pretty well it's spread across uh, across the sides of the head there and across the sides at the back there so now we're just sort of missing the front and the bottom part and the very top part so we just need to we just need to readjust our anode placement to somewhere else so we can touch somewhere at the bottom here probably on that part of the jaw and at the top of the head at the same time why not and then we'll pop it back in and come back in another half hour or so Okay, so another half hour or so passed, uh, probably near an hour this time. Uh, let's give it a look. Stop tripping around. You can say we're getting much better coverage now. So, tangled up. top. I've just got some on his face to complete, and a little bit around the back. So we'll reposition it and leave it again. Let's give it another look. And we're getting there. We've got partial coverage. So now get the camera to focus, but it will. Um, so we're just missing the part of the face still motion. Um, see how we're getting on. So, let's see now we've just got the eye and oh, it. Uh, a bit there. To do so, a bit more on the face to do, and we should be good. I might actually just leave it in for a few hours this time, give it time to get through and penetrate. Be good to go. So what I'm going to do is um, I've cracked it up to 1.3 volts now, 
and let the um, let it be limited by the voltage rather than the amperage. So the amperage has gone up to 0.67 amp. And the idea here now we've got pretty much full coverage. Um, this piece at the back there that's not quite full. So the idea now is that we're just going to. build up a layer of thickness now so that we can get a good thick layer all the way around so we can polish and clean it up. So I'll leave it in there now for an hour or two um, just to thicken up like I say and then oh, we should be done. Good stuff. Okay so uh, our subject's been uh, plating for a few hours now, so it's time to take it out and uh, let's take a look. So first of all, off with the power. These leads out of my way. And what I'll do is I'll just put it straight into some water, a bit of rinse. Get a rinse to get rid of the, the sulfate solution and the vinegar off it. You might find if there's a small hole in the object that actually it oozes copper sulfate for a day or two. So just be aware of that, be careful where you're placing it. So what I expect to see at this point is a nice salmon pink. Um, compare that with the uh, an aged copper, um, you can see the difference in the colour there. So don't be surprised if it comes out of salmon pink, you can see it's just drying there. Um, that is what we're after, it shows that there's a nice layer of new copper on there. It will be dull, that's fine, and it will be in this case a little bit rough. So it's still a bit damp, I'm going to dry a bit more. some of that moisture. Okay, so the next stage now is to actually polish that up in some way to bring it to a nice shiny surface. Um, you can use power tools, but you risk inducing a lot, introducing a lot of heat into the object. If you introduce a lot of heat, you could buckle it, you could delaminate the copper away from the object. So what I'd recommend is using hand tools only. So you can use a fine sandpaper, or what I found works pretty well is uh, wire wool. So we'll just do this a little bit on camera and then I'll go away and finish it off camera. Right, so in this case it's come out pretty rough. We could smooth these off with um, some sandpaper but you can see that the shine starting to come there. Again the colour will come later. If you take uh, this one which has been around for a few weeks now, it's been cleaned up and then left to tarnish again, you can see the difference in the colour. Uh, but the shine is starting to come through and the more we work that with the um, the wire wall the better effect that we're going to get. So I'm going to go off camera now, uh, I'm just going to clean this up and then be right back. So there you go, that's it after some clean up as you can see um, we can still, just to focus, as you can see we can still see our print defects etc. Um, just a reminder that this was straight off the print bed so there was no clean up on that unlike this one which was cleaned up before I actually copper plated it. I've just given the top a bit of a polish there so you can see that um, how similar they are really. Um, this one 
that we've just done will age and go a dark color like this. So you can choose what state and what color you actually prefer and then lock it in with a lacquer. So you can give it a coat of clear coat and it will lock it like that so you don't have to worry about it degrading or getting darker over time. If you like the grunge, the darker look, just leave it and it will tarnish and blacken over time to that sort of state. Give it a rub with either fire and wire wool or some sort of metal cleaner, you can bring it back to that. Very nice shiny finish and then like I say you can lacquer it to stop it going any further once you're happy with it. So there you go, I'll now do a quick uh, recap on the whole process and give you a quick uh, overview so you don't forget anything. But you can now create your prints using just vinegar and copper sulfate and an additive uh, and actually get really good copper plated 3D prints with not that much cost and depending on the time you spend on clean up etc, quite professional results. Thank you very much. Wow, that was longer than I expected. To summarise, and for those of you who skipped straight to this point, to be honest, I don't blame you. <laughs> um, what we did was we mixed up some graphite powder with polyurethane varnish until it's quite a thick paste. We then added some thinners to that um, until it was smooth so that we could apply a nice smooth coat of it. Uh, we waited until it's thoroughly dry. We check the resistance across an inch, two and a half centimetres, and we were looking for less than 10 kilo ohms across that distance. Any less than that, you're good to go. The solution itself, we mixed a litre of warm white vinegar with 150 grams of uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate, and we dissolved that in there. We then added a mixture of uh, distilled water and polyethylene glycol, and we added 10 millilitres of that into the solution. We used copper tubing as our cathodes and we connected those to the positive and we wrapped a piece of um, copper wire around our object or held it under the solution with a piece of copper. Either way, we connected that to the negative, which is our anode. We then started to cover the object with copper um, and this is quite a slow process, so what we did was used a voltage of less than 1 volt and an amperage set to approximately 0.1 amps per square inch, maybe less to start with. Every hour we moved the object and turned it just so that we didn't uh, fuse the copper wire with our new copper surface. And after about 4 hours thereabouts we had complete coverage of our object. We could then turn the amperage and the voltage up, so we could put the voltage to about 3 volts. Um, don't really want to go a bit any higher than 3 volts, you burn the object and you'll get a funny looking copper colour. Um, so 3 volts maximum and leave that for an hour or so to give it a good decent coat. You can leave it for longer for a thicker coat if you want. And what we're looking for is a sort of a dull salmon pink colour when you're finished. When our object's finished plating, we can give it a light rub with some wire wool. That will shine up the object and give it a nice goldy sort of shiny colour. And the longer we leave it after that in the air, the darker the colour gets over a period of about a week. Um, once the object's at a, a look that you like, you can then give it a coat of clear coat or lacquer and that will lock that look in and stop it oxidising further and keep the object looking the way you want it. So that's it, very simple really, um, but it's quite hard to pull those steps together. So hopefully this video has helped you. So if you like the video, just click like and subscribe and that will encourage me to do another video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your patience. And just to reiterate, I'm not an expert in any of this and I don't claim to be. So have fun printing and have fun plating. Enjoy.